the scholarship uh, behind Laughing Shall I Die draws from the art of the time. How does that work? How does, how does art draw a picture of history? Uh. Well, um, you have to be very careful with it. And, I, you know, in my book, I think the, the first section is kind of fact or fiction. And the last section says something like, was it all made up? So this was on my mind all the time. And I think a lot of the time you can't believe a word of it. I mean, uh, fuzzy pants, indeed. Uh, snake bite proof trousers. Ah, oh, yeah, OK, pull the other one. Um, so a lot of that I, I just... A lot of that is just fairy tale, basically. Um, but at the same time, uh, this was preserved very largely in Iceland. And Icelanders are very keen on genealogy, still very keen on genealogy. Um, I met a young woman who told me that she was the direct descendant of the Viking Eitel Skatlagrimsson, and I see no reason to disbelieve her. They keep very good records in Iceland. And I think that meant that Iceland was full of people who said, very proudly, well, my grandfather died with King Olaf on the Long Serpent, or uh, my great grandfather, he fought uh, with the Jarl Hawkon at the Battle of Hurungavag. So they preserved stories of their ancestors and their families, and they, in, you know, and they incorporated these into the sagas. And I think that's pretty good evidence, actually. Um, I know people kind of um, hype things up. My own grandfather hyped things up, and once and once or twice I caught him doing it. But uh, but still, there was still some truth in what he said. So uh, I I uh, I take the saga stories, especially the king sagas uh, and the Icelanders sagas, um, as as deserving respect. They may not be absolutely true in every detail, but the people who wrote them thought they were true. Mm. Listen, they were hard to write. They were hard to remember. There had to be some important value in them or why would they have been committed to memory or paper? Yes, well, uh, the, quite so. Uh, uh, and there are several reasons for that, I think. Uh, uh, one thing is that Icelanders were not only very keen on genealogy, they were also very keen on property rights. So they had uh, very clear ideas of where their boundaries were and they could tell you where their farm boundaries were. And uh, that all got written down very carefully indeed. And it's very much part of the sagas because a lot of the sagas are arguments about fences and who owns timber and who, who has the right to hay from that field or this field, that kind of thing. It's all taken very seriously. Um, but uh, another thing they're very keen on was poetry. And poetry is much easier to remember than prose, because if you start getting the rhymes wrong or the scansion wrong or the meter wrong, someone will notice and correct it. So actually we have, uh, I think, uh, very well preserved poems, which are genuinely from the Viking age and which are full of, uh, of information of one kind or another. 